Assalamu alaikum. IELTS reading is the toughest task, and today we'll cover IELTS gap fill type questions. Means fill in the blanks. Fill in the blanks are actually difficult for the students to to solve because students have to read the complete passage. In this video, I'll tell you something very special to solve those questions. So please subscribe my channel before going to the video. Okay, here comes the lesson. IELTS reading gap fill. A reading gap fill is one task you get in the IELTS test. You have to fill the gaps of a summary of the part of the text using words from a box. So here comes a lesson. IELTS reading gap fill. A reading gap fill is one task you get in the IELTS test. You have to fill the gaps of the summary of the part in the text using words from a box. There may be more words than you need to use. So you need to find the part of the reading that refers to summary and make sure that you work out which word will fit there. You also need to think about the grammar as the word you put in the reading gap fill must fit grammatically as well. Here are some general strategies. Now here are the strategies. Strategies for reading gap fill tasks. Look at question one. These are the strategies you can try following. Now, for example, I'll take you to question number one of the passage. And after reading that question, you will be able to find out how can you use these type of the strategies in order to find the answers of the real time passage, which will you have there in your IELTS exam. So here's the summary. The first, now look at that. The first time and dash of air rage was recorded was in the 1940s. But the passengers was never actually charged. Okay, what was that? No, forget it. Uh, first of all, keep in mind the first time that and dash of the air rage was recorded. Now over here, you have a hint that there is the word written and. It means you need something very special over here. That might be what I'll tell you later. So in this way, when you will read the question first, you will get the idea that if the and is written there, you have to find some noun over there. For example, and what? After that, and there should be a word, a such a word which use and before that. So we have to, this is a clue over there. We can use that clue. So here are the strategies again. Looking at question one, these are the strategies you can try following. So we have studied question one over there. Now these are the strategies we'll use to solve that question and also the question which will you get in your final exam. Number one, read through the summary carefully to make sure you understand it. You have to read through the summary. For example, there is a summary of the question. We have to read through the summary and I recommend, I recommend that you should uh, revise the summary three times. If you will read that summary three times, your brain will start generating ideas and you can write those ideas also. And your brain personally help you in a very, very better way. So read the passage or the summary three times. Number two, work out which section of the reading the summary comes from. In this example, the whole of the text is summarized, but in the real task, you will need to look through the reading to find the right paragraphs. Okay, got it over here. Uh, there, the, it's a shorter that, but over there in your examination, the real test, you will need to look through the reading to find out the right paragraph. Now, number three. Carefully read the sentence with the first gap and think about what form will fit. That is, should it be an adjective, a noun, infinitive, present participle, etc. And what type of word is needed? That is, is it an amount, a change, an action? So keep these things in mind from the clue you will find out. You know that over there the word and was written, which really helps us in the way. Number four, you should have worked out that for question one, you are looking for a noun because and comes before it. 
I have told you before that from that and you can guess that whether you need a noun or adjective or whatever, if you know the grammar of the IELTS, then you can understand that after and there should be a noun. So this is a good guess method. Number five, then look at the words that are in the box. Which ones have the right form to fit and the right type? There are several nouns. On the box, several nouns are given, but by reading the passage three times, your brain will try to tell you that which is the proper word over there that, or the noun you have to answer over there. You have to fill that. Number six, look at the correct part of the full reading that refers to the reading gap fill section. You are looking at and decide what happened for the first time to do with air rage in 1940. Air rage in 1940 is actually the name of the passage. So what you do is, while, while reading that passage, you have to focus that which part was actually mostly discussed in the summary. Now move ahead. Use this information to help you choose the correct word for the reading gap fill. Whenever you are going to uh, explain the reading uh, gap fill or you're gonna attempt those type of the question then what to do is you have to sink in this parameter in these type of the math and should be in your brain to to get the guess of of the answer and now I'll read the summary for you after reading the summary we'll read the passage and then we'll be able to understand how to solve those the type of the questions or the blanks and how to fill the gaps there. Before reading the summary, we have to read some words which will be used to fill the blanks over there. So the words are over here. For example, the number one is predicted, then rose, incident, passenger, found, assault, established, occurring, hoped, increased, injury, passenger. These are actually the words which will be used in these gaps. So the summary. The first time that an dash of air rage was recorded was in the 1940s, but the passenger was never actually charged for an offense because there was no clear rules in place to specify where to prosecute. It was later dash that it would be, it would be the country where the plane is registered. Air rage has dashed significantly since this time, growing by staggering 400% from 1995 to 1998. Air rage is dashed to be a major problem in the future as air travel increases, as, as do level of aggression. Angry dash can put everyone in danger, including the pilots, the crew, and the other passengers with some form of dash being the most common consequence. So this is the passage. And you can stop my video over here. Let me adjust the passage in a better way. For example, it is over here. Now this is the passage. You, you have to make the picture of this passage or take the screenshot from cell phone or print screen from your laptop and read the passage three times. If you will read three times, then your brain will start processing in a very positive way and you can solve that in an easy way. So I'm gonna go ahead. You can pause my video. Okay, I think you have studied that. Now move ahead. Let's move back first of all. The reading gap fill practice, air rage. I'm gonna read that for you and you can um, stop my video if you like and you can read by yourself or uh, when I'll read the complete passage, you can pause my video, you can go a little back and you can read that by yourself if you like. Let me enhance the size of the screen or the passage so that you can understand that in a more better way. Reading gap filled practice, air rage. The first record case of an airline passenger turning seriously violent during a flight, a phenomenon now widely known as air rage, happened in 1947 on a flight from Havana to Miami. A drunk man assaulted another passenger and a bit and a bit of flight attendant. However, the man escaped punishment because it was not then clear under whose legal control a crime committed on plane was. The country where the plane was registered or the country where the crime was committed. In 1963 at the Tokyo Convention, it was decided that the laws of the country where the plane is registered take precedence. Now the second paragraph. 
the frequency of air rage has expanded out of the proportion to the growth of the air travel. Until recently, few statistics were gathered about air rage, but those that have been indicated the passengers are in increasingly likely to cause trouble or engage in violent acts. For example, in 1998, there were 266 air rage incidents out of approximately 4 million passengers, a 400% increase from 1995. In the same period, American Airlines showed a 200% rise. Air travel is predicted to rise by 5% internationally by 2010, leading to increased airport congestion. This coupled with the flying few public's increased aggression means that air rage may become a major issue in the coming years. Now, power three. Aside from discomfort and disruption, air rage poses some very real dangers to fly. The most extreme of these is when out of control passengers enter the cockpit. This has actually happened on a number of occasions, the worst of which have resulted in the death and injury of the pilots or the intruder taking control of the plane, almost resulting in crashes. In addition, the circs, passengers sometimes attempt to open the emergency doors while in flight putting the whole aircraft in danger. There are extremely, these are extreme examples and causes of air rage more commonly result in physical assault on fellow passengers and crew such as throwing objects, punching, stabbing, or scalding with hot coffee. So this was the passage. Now these are uh, the, the words over here. Look at the words in the table and decide which word will fit in the reading gap fill summary. So what to do is you have to pause my video and read this passage by yourself or you can uh, you can take the, the shots of this passage and you can read later. You can pause the video, take a shot and read that by yourself. Uh, now make this shot, uh, make a picture of this. Make a picture of this page and read that. After this, this one, okay. Make a picture of this page. Let's move forward. Look at the words in the table and decide which word will fit in the reading gap. Fill summary, type the word into the gap when you have completed it, you can click below to reveal the check your answers. You have to read these, these uh, words three to five times, please. Now let's move towards a summary. Let me adjust it. So these are the words over here and this is a summary. All of them are arranged in the same page. Now what to do is you have to take two to three to four minutes, pause my video, and try to fill these words in these gaps. Oh yes, thank you. I think that you have completed that now. Now move ahead. What you have written over there. Now let me give you the answer. The first time that an incident, there should be the word incident, of air rage was recorded was in the 1940s, but the passenger was never actually charged for an offense because there were no clear rules to place to specify where, the, where to prosecute. It was later established that it would be the country where the plane is registered. Air rage has increased significantly since this time, growing by a staggering 400% from 1995 to 1998 air rage is predicted to be a major problem in the future as air travel increases. As new level of the aggression, angry passengers can put everyone in danger, including the pilots and the crew and, and the other passengers, which some of fall from of assault being the most common consequences. So this was actually uh, the answers, the, the, the words you have to put over there. Now, how is that? Let's discuss the answer. Let's uh, study the case here. So now, reading gap fill answers discussion. Number one, incident. 
why we have written incident over here in this place. The first time that an dash of air rage was recorded in 1940s. We are gonna discuss this. It is very useful for you if you were really a true student. Number one, incident. You should have worked out that this is a synonym of for case. The other nouns in the box would not be fit here. So, another hint over there is an incident. An incident. Incident is actually a synonym of a case, so you have to write incident over here. So, an is there, we can say an case or an assault. So, what to do is next. The second is established. Established can mean to set up something up such as a system of rules. So this would fit here. You may have thought it was found, but this means to discover something. The new legislation wasn't discovered, so the word should be established there. I can guess that you may have uh, write the word found, but that is not true because for the font you have to uh, font means to discover something and uh, it is different from that the third is increased if you refer to the reading you can see that this is the trend referred to rows does not fit grammatically increased mean it is the trend over here that you have to use to the increase over there if your brain says the word rows then the rows is not proper Let's see, let's go over uh, the words over there. This is number three. Air rage has rows, no. Air rage has significantly, significantly since last this time. So you should not write over here the rows. You should write over here increased. Why? Let me tell you again. If you refer to the reading, you can see that this is the trend referred to rows does refer to and rose does not fit grammatically now four is predicted now let's let's come towards the word uh the four a rage is dash to be a major problem in the future as the air travel increases so over here predicted rose incidents passenger found assault passenger injury increased hoped occurring established now, what we have written over there, number four, predicted. The reading and the summary shows that the future is being discussed. So this word fits. Over there, there's a summary. The future is being discussed, so this word really fits over here. Next is passenger. It must be the plural as it is being used as a general noun for the singular an article would need to have been used. Okay, at the fifth place, we have to write something. What? Over here. Angry dash can put angry passengers. Angry passengers can put everywhere or everything, some, some, something, whatever. Now, uh, number six is assault. If you put injury, this is wrong. As the reading does not say people are commonly injured, but it does refer to assault. You can get assaulted without getting injured. Over here, you should not, not write over here uh, with some people from form of dash injury being the most common consequences. You should write over here with some people form of assault being the most common consequences. So, so this was actually today's lecture about the reading passage gap fill. You can use this technique to practice in your home or practice in your institute if you are a trainer. And the next is I'll make some more videos on the same topic. And thank you very much for watching till the end. You must subscribe, like, and share my channel. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. May you have great band.